one of the things I remember Russell saying this when, we first, uh, when he was first taking over the show is it's new, it's a new show, don't think of it as an old show, think of it as a new show. And so you're always trying to do something that's brand new because you want to act against the fact that you know even the new version of the show is 10 years old. That it's 52 years old. You're always trying to say, I don't want kids to think this is some sort of revered heirloom that's been passed down from generations. It belongs to your dad and your older brother. No, it belongs to you. So you make it new. In a way, you deliberately want to say to people, you actually want people sitting back in the audience going, I'm not quite sure that's right. I'm not quite sure if that's Doctor Who yet. Um, and, and then bringing them into the fold. Uh, because if you don't do that, the show just becomes a recreation of the past and it must never be that. So we'll always push it, yeah. So you've, you've pretty much promised at this point we're going to find Gallifrey at some point, maybe not this year, but at some point. But how do you deal with the fact that there's psychotic Timothy Dalton, there's, you know, genocidal maniacs? You know, how do you deal with the fact that Gallifrey is actually horrible? It's not all horrible, though, is it? I mean, I, I always resent that. I mean, if we're going to be all judged by the standards of our governments, we're all screwed, aren't we? <laughs> aren't we? Do you want to be judged by the standard of your government? Well, actually, you've got a good one. But, you know, uh, you know these... Uh, no, uh, there's loads of people working there. What are the people who worked in the kitchens? What are the people who worked on the farms? They're not responsible for that, are they? And the doctor would know that. So if, if the doctor were ever to get back there, if that were to ever happen, some people are in for an arse kicking, but uh, you know, he knows, he knows. It's not, it's not the, the stuff people like us, uh, the sad scum of the earth and Gallifrey, who are responsible for the terrible crimes of the High Council. They were always rubbish. Remember them in the old series. How many traitors were on that high cuz? <laughs> the idea, Gallifrey's idea of a, of a law-abiding time lord is the doctor. He's an established criminal who's done time. <laughs> so actually staying on the subject of Gallifrey, the 50th anniversary special, we've all sort of suspected that if, if Eccleston had been able to do it, he would have had the, the John Hurt role. Is that basically true? A, a version of it would have been, I mean, I had so many different versions, Charlie, of that show. So many different versions, including the Deadly Secret one where I thought, what if none of them turn up? <laughs> what if it's just Jenna? <laughs> I'm not kidding. Um, so, yes, there was one version, but I never, we never did very much with it because Chris was always very open from the start. That it was highly unlikely that that was going to happen, that he was going to be in it. I have to say, just be very clear, that he's a lovely bloke. He was uh, warm and friendly and has always been very kind about Doctor Who. It's just not, the, going back is not the sort of thing he does. So I knew it was unlikely to be, and I, everybody fell in love with, before I did actually, I suggested it, everybody fell in love with the idea of say, there's a secret extra Doctor, no one's ever heard of him, and this is, really, is going to be funny and exciting. And I pitched that, everyone said yes, and I went, are we sure? <laughs> And I remember saying to Faith Penny on the phone, I said, but what if there's somebody who's got tattoos of all the doctors with numbers? <laughs> what are we going to do to that person? So I, I, was the, I was the fanboy in the room saying, but, but we're changing the numbering. <laughs> So last question. So the doctor went through this arc where he sort of was like, I got too big. And then he had this thing last year where he was questioning if he was a good man. Yeah. Is that over? Is he done questioning his stature or his goodness in the universe? Sort of? He's got a different set of questions. I mean, I don't think the doctor ever stops, uh, stops asking the question, am I a good man? Because that's what good men do. It is. That's what good people do, is they ask, are they actually good? I think the, the, the fundamentally exciting, interesting thing about him as a hero is he never signed on for being a hero at all. He's not on a mission to rid the universe of evil. He's on a mission to go to a fairground, go to a nice park, have lunch with somebody famous. That's what he's doing. He happens to bump into uh, terrible injustice, and because he's such a profoundly decent person, he always gets involved. He is the passerby who becomes the last man standing. And that's, that's, that's the story of Doctor Who every single episode, in a way. And I love that story, but it does mean he goes around thinking, why does everybody think I'm this mighty warrior or this great hero or the oncoming storm? I'm, a, I'm an idiot with a time-travelling box, and I'm trying to have lunch with Marie Antoinette. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's all he's trying to do, in a way.